Hello there. As you may have gathered from my previous video and everything else about this video, I'll be discussing what happened after the Toby and Hopeless Peaches drama relating to the people involved, whether they did good or bad. This will follow along a formula of separating them into their stance on the matter, so either the good, bad, or the catalyst, then going over their involvement in both, followed up with how they are faring in the current times about two years after detonation. If you are new to this whole situation, or need a refresher on it, then you can check out this video by Cecil McFly, detailing all the downfalls involved. You best be grateful there are chapters that could be utilised here, so you don't have to sit through the entire four hour running to get to the part you want to see. Before I throw you into the first section, I should bring up the contenders that will appear throughout the video now so that you can get to grips with who is where. The first group I will go over is the catalyst featuring Toby and Hopeless Peaches, who are the reasons as to why everything blew up in the first place due to their mistakes or actions leading up to this. Next would be the bad, featuring Kai, Omnia, Creepshow Art and Prison Mate Luke. These people may have started out with good intentions, but as time went on, they showed themselves to be rather insufferable or untrustworthy to be around. Finally, we have The Good, featuring Just a Robot, Mally Malware, Just Stop, and Spy V. These people more or less impacted the situation to degree where Peaches was able to regain some ground or they were able to break down a figure into a useless state where people would finally understand the lies being strewn about. If I am to miss anything then do leave it in the comments below so I can make a pinned comment adding on missed bits and pieces. The idea of adding Toby all seemed to come about when I decided I wanted to go all the way back instead of just having the most recent stuff with Peaches be added, so here we are. Originally, Toby had created a video on Creepshow Art going over the many flaws of her content and how she conducted herself on Twitter, especially after an incident where she falsely accused someone of sharing underage nudes of someone else. However, with the critiques out there, people were able to cast the same back at Toby, and so Kai and Omnia did so to prove she was being a hypocrite. This was later fueled by accusations thrown out there by Toby that Ben the Looney was a paedophile for drawing underage characters from OKKO OK naked, only for it to be revealed that she had done explicit artwork for a Sailor Moon character. The artwork of Todoroki has been an open subject considering it takes aspects of BDSM but shows no actual NSFW content besides the tags so it kind of sits in limbo for some people. After a video addressing the controversies, Toby tried to return to regular content and got rid of the creep show video but it was a fruitless attempt considering the waves of comments coming through. After deleting their Twitter, they went silent completely, besides an Instagram story which came out far later and lacked context for her to understand why Kai was getting cancelled at the time. Moving on to present times, we can see they haven't shown any activity on YouTube besides a community post linking to a twit longer explaining their side of things at the time of the drama. It also goes over a couple more things that I covered in a separate video, so if you want to take a quick detour to watch that, then come back, I would advise doing so. For those of you who want a quick refresh on what happened, then I will summarise it here, like this. Toby explains that they had been a victim of Omnia after having their openness manipulated so that she could share personal pieces that could later be twisted to their favour. This is followed up by calling everyone out for not noticing the cycle that Omnia and Kai continued to go through where they got all friendly with someone or to backstab them when it seemed favourable to them both. Below her rant on the former are sections going over things like the commentary community as it is now or those who had used her Doc's memorial video. This ended with the conclusion of her life as it is now and after everything she seems better off than when online so it isn't likely we will hear from her again anytime soon. Maybe this is for the best though as they mention how much they dislike the old version of themselves who thrived in that sort of space and wishes not to return to it, so we aren't ever likely to see a video on the channel again.
Now, Hopeless Peaches ended up here due to making comments across the whole Toby situation regarding her thoughts of everything, whilst also bickering with Omnia regarding the legitimacy of their friendship over a one month period, paired with the whole, you know, is it right to leak DMs in such a way. Though things really blew up when prison mate Luke mentioned Peaches to be a suicide beta, which is wrong by definition, just by a pattern he had cobbled together in his mind to justify it. After trying to settle everything privately, and Luke getting on the defensive, Peaches wasn't really left with many options and toyed with the idea of making a video, but never went through with it. Provocation of such was enough to force Luke's hand early causing the Stop Lying Peaches video to come out and ultimately cause everything to spiral from there. From dead issues that already had been settled to new ones dragging themselves out from the dark sent everyone to die bomb onto Peaches and while some things held weight, like the whole Lamino post, it seemed a majority of it was overblown to kill her channel outright. Everything that had happened was because of Luke's poor judgement and lack of understandability when it came to taking things back. He kept lashing out and eventually fell backwards into his own grave, but that's for later. Being unable to really speak, Hopeless Peaches faded into the background so others could fight the battle necessary in order to clear her name of all the lies being spread. Notably, just a robot who went video by video to redeem himself after previously leaving Peaches to save himself, whilst others stepped in to help when necessary. Peaches returned to YouTube to do a proper video clearing things up, then dismantling Creepshow art herself in a video and live stream, and finally achieved a state of peace on her online standing again. As of present, Hopeless Peaches seems to be doing just alright with her channel, besides the odd speed bump with Omnia who had made a poor critique of a response video. Thankfully, the community, including myself now, was able to push past their lies and misinformation until they apologised and as such gave Peaches little grief as a result. I would assume Omnia was attempting to rile things up thinking they were going to go the same way as last time, but that is just speculation considering the two aren't exactly friends anymore. Outside of YouTube, Peaches hosts two accounts for either casual stuff or just content stuff and allows for a clear distinction to be made on Twitter. Things aren't all good though, and she is currently struggling to stay in her flat after separating from her abusive ex-partner and in need of downsizing since her pay isn't high enough to cover what previously was being brought in by the other. If you can help, then I advise donating to the fundraiser in the description in order to stop her from going homeless of a mistake they could not control. With everything that has happened, it would be the support they deserve for standing tall in the face of adversity. With both Toby and Hopeless Peach's respective drama out of the way, we should meet the bad apples that were originally involved to begin with that sent everything spiralling down. You get it? Like, bad apples, Hopeless Peaches, you know, that kind of thing. It is safe to say that had Kai never made the criticism of video of Toby, then it would be possible a lot of things may never have changed to begin with. However, this isn't that timeline, so we should start by addressing what his first video went for, and that was to expose Toby's toxic traits that shone through just as bright as the person she was criticising, and as such he would rope Omnia in for future videos since they shared the same distaste for Toby's actions. Spoiler alert, these two are either a couple going into the drama or coupled up during so, so let that sink in when looking between their actions. Just be aware it doesn't last. It would only be a matter of time until Kai himself would be judged by Toby's friends and had the petty jabs pointed out in an attempt of getting things cleared up to show the difference between criticism and insults. This escalated when just a robot Manga Common and Fuchsia Butter released that collaboration video they that struck harder on Kai and Omnia's part that it wasn't really a video about Toby anymore. Many people can fairly agree that the quality wasn't quite there, especially with Goose such as the Black Sponge and Fuchsia's involvement to begin with. The last notable thing on the reel for Toby's drama was the response to Harsh Opinion and how lame that came across since he doesn't even address her using the right skin tone when a potentially racist remark is brought around. I think it'd be best to save whatever happened in the Hopeless Peaches drama regarding Kai for Omnia's section, since he more so supported them that responded. Looking past the Hopeless Peaches drama, it isn't long before we see Kai embroil himself in controversy again 
by copyright striking Akumu's channel, having a debate with John Swan only to lose significantly, delete a majority of his social media. This worsens further as he will later, allegedly, strike Omnia alongside stealing a majority of their stuff since he had purchased it himself. Obviously, you can see how he misinterprets the way in which gift giving works. Omnia would later get an emergency protective order, which Kai violated when coming to retrieve more stuff, leading to him being bailed out not long after. It is clear to say that the two have been at odds ever since, with their court battle fast approaching at some point in February, though it hasn't stopped Kai from throwing sucker punches at people he knew, or just going after Omnia whenever he can, such as outing Omnia's ties to the LGBT community to their homophobic parents who cut off all financial support afterward. Back on YouTube, he seems to be trying to go back to his old ways regarding being a part of the commentary community, but it isn't likely he will be sticking around for that long when people consider what he has done, but also what he might do. Not only that, but he eventually returned to Twitter to just fuck around I suppose and that's that. Well, I suppose you, you can add on that he got Gabby back from Omnia, so he's intended to take time away, that is. Otherwise, we wait for February. Just like Kai, they were also a critic of Toby, so they worked together in videos trying to get across that they had fallen down too in regards to the content and how they came across as over Twitter. However, they would eventually leak chats between themselves and Toby to the public after being able to grind a story out of it first, allowing for it to be used in whatever way they choose. When Jar's video was released, it appeared as though they had reacted the most when making a rebuttal and ultimately spilling the fact that Hopeless Peaches had made an edit to the script also, or rather a correction, a correction to the original script before Manga come and decided to team up with the others. Yet, yeah, it, it, it's safe to assume that Omnia likes to overreact and try to pass it off as fact, also, with the previous drama and now concurrent one didn't show that off clearly now, it didn't help that the thumbnail used had imagery from Peach's grooming thumbnail, which devalued it as people went to hate on the original video until it was changed upon request. Such events faded into the background for Omnia as they focused on the problems at her door, being the assault she had faced in regards to Kai before he left with their things. If it wasn't bad enough, then he supposedly deleted their channel out of the blue alongside her Twitter account, but only the latter could be recovered because of this, so they've been growing the platform they previously had from the ground up. And this was mainly done by taking swings at Creepshow Art, but they oftentimes slipped in their own work outside of that too. It would be as of recent that things started to go downhill again, as they tried to say what was trauma and what was drama. I won't repeat myself again, so the video in the iCard if you want to check that situation out, but that being said, Hopeless Peaches pointed out the flaws in the video whilst also taking shots at Omnia for the trade start used in the thumbnail. Plagiarising as well as categorising drama caused a large backlash from the community, as everyone went against such a notion until they apologised. For now, it seems like they are gonna hide away from the internet when it comes to their main account at least, and just wait for the court battle to go through. Even now, people are resurfacing even more traced items Omnia had used. Hell, even I found this pathetic attempt to swap their profile picture to look less basic. As if tracing wasn't bad enough, they started writing fucking fan fiction of Kai getting sent to jail. Like, this is really getting unhinged now. That being said, someone has yet to be called out, which was fueling the fires long before anyone thought to jump. Wait, they aren't doing the same reveal as last time, damn it. There is a lot to unpack when it comes to Creepshow Art's involvement with everything due to how deep her roots are stuck in everywhere, even before Toby made her video at the time, since they were around longer. Though the real involvement came in late with Prisonmate Luke's video where he brings in evidence 
given by Creepshow herself that things start going off the rails since she used him like a puppet to spread her own narrative around. Such a facade was maintained strongly all the way through that Peaches was some sort of horrible person and the curtain was drawn and people followed such a message since they didn't look more deeply into the matter. It'd be when a handful of creators fought back at her word and friends of Peaches made the document that people started to see how much Creepshow had lied to them. Even her response to the doc was bad when picked apart by someone I'll be covering later. With time, she was shoved from the drama when people realised there was no point in trusting her word when it was likely a lie. Going off the rails a bit shows that Creepshow has no future on YouTube, nor anywhere else besides her merch store. As she finally gave up once not only lol cows showed her to be a pest, but also Emily Artful came out with this video, proving that Creepshow was also a stalker that would plague her life with misery every step, even trying when making space for her to go away. Originally, once the evidence was presented, we didn't hear anything from Creepshow, until they reappeared on New Year's Eve to drop a video of her own calling Emily a liar, only ended up providing the stalking she had done when pulling up irrelevant accounts from many years ago that proved nothing. With such a poor comeback, Creepshow quickly fled again, and no one has seen anything of her since the fact as every social media attached died out far before the video went live, leaving us with a husk. Finally, we can cover the last little troublemaker that was brought into this situation. It would be after just a robot's Toby video that Prismate Luke decided to jump into the mix with his content as such became the trigger to set everything off regarding Hopeless Peaches where he called her a suicide beta, propped up a false narrative thanks to Creepshow art and further buried her name considering how he went about reporting everything to his audience. Constant blows to Peach's name saw him receive more success so he continued to use every bit he could grasp for until Just Stop cut him off with the first concise video picking apart his actions, not just during the drama, but before even going on about how he could better himself. Luke didn't like the looks of this and got defensive, followed by a video that tried very little in regards to actually responding and more so to denounce Just Stop while he was at it. When a second video was dropped, that's when everything started to come crumbling down far faster than Luke could have predicted, with an example of how his work could have falsely ended a creator's career if he had been wrong thanks to his lack of research. When the dust settled and the drama died down, Luke would have time to do nothing but make up his own work by going at targets that he had already covered, or going over things Just Stop had covered previously. One day though, Luke would go silent completely, as his Twitter had been quiet beforehand, and who knows when he actually streamed last, but this would be altered when he posted an apology video. An apology video far too late of course, but at least he made his mistakes known when he usually jumped into a situation all angry. Not everything will be covered though, leading to a follow up comment which was pinned beneath the video expressing his guilt for causing Hopeless Peaches so much anguish but it isn't likely we will hear about him again though. Amongst everything, it is clear to see why two of the four people left the internet upon realising their career as a content creator was forever tainted with their past actions as the damning evidence was brought to light or the views died down far more than anticipated. Meanwhile, the other two continue to thrash around feeling as though they have a chance to return even if they keep taking breaks to clear their mind. The actions left from the past will be hard to erase. Until they can prove they are better than before, then it isn't likely their past fame will return to them. Even after their breaks, they'll be gloating over their victory in court or how they were wronged in the justice system. They are more alike than they think when it comes to complaining, I shall say. Let us move on to the people who actually pulled their weight when it came to helping out in this situation. Clearly it would be futile to actually recommend my Just A Robot video in this case because it covers too much to actually be of relevance here, so I'll wrap up the involvement that Jar had in this scenario. Originally, Jar had come to Manga Carmen and asked to adapt one of the scripts I was currently sitting and waiting after he injured himself, so thanks to Jar it became a full video 
now including Fuchsia Butter. Only problem was that they veered away from speaking on Toby to go over Kai and Omnia instead, which didn't turn out too well as I've explained before. When things started to go sideways, Jar had to duck for cover until he could properly respond to Luke before going on his quest to clear Hopeless Peach's name since he had thrown her under the bus to save himself prior. So far, he has a long list of videos saved into a playlist for people to view, and ultimately made sure Peach has left the drama semi-stable, as the hate was mostly dismissed. Once everything was done, Jar finally found the time to carry on in his own endeavours again. Those keeping on track with Just A Robot's channel will know of his activity after the dramas where he got tied up in false allegations from people of his past that have done him no good. Thanks to the community rallying around him and the evidence not lining up at all, these allegations quickly dispersed, leaving Jar shaken but still able to post with the exception of staying away from drama until October where he likely will still fade it back in but to a slower margin. This is probably to keep his mental health in check after the turbulent ride he has been forced to endure up until now, but a greater sense of awareness has found him no doubt. Before all of this, Malice and Macaroons was just an animation or animatic channel until Hopeless Peaches' drama came to the forefront of their channel as a breakdown of what had gone on and disassembled the lie set forward. This carried on to the Mally Malware channel, which became an extension for more commentary style content that Mally seemed to grow into now. Nonetheless, this would be where the second half of the video was posted to clear up stuff looming overhead with Prison May Luke, but also act as an update considering the time between the different uploads. Clocking in at around 3 hours and 49 minutes total, and everything was compiled into a well-structured video that worked best for referencing at the time, plus Mally at the top regarding organisation. As time went on, Mally found her groove better with the content she had plunged herself into and ran well with to work on future pieces, breaking down the commentary community as a whole or cracking into other topics. Currently, she still tends to maintain this long style type for her content, with videos being spaced out due to the effort that goes into them, with evidence streams going alongside this too, so there isn't a giant divide in when stuff comes out. Otherwise, there are regular streams also where a VTuber rig is set up for her character to bounce around the corner it is bound to, though it can range from art to games in regards to content that is used also. When it comes to Just Stop, he never really jumped onto the dramas like everyone else due to him not necessarily being a commentary channel, but instead a movie or show reviewer at the time. This introduction would come through the form of a critique on Prison Mate Luke after realising the glaring issues that came from his channel handling the power he had so recklessly and began breaking him down. Point by point, he mentioned how Luke sounded so bored in his videos and the lack of research done, and then tips for improving his content, such as incorporating the whole present thing into his work to give people a break from the same gameplay used consecutively in each video. In response, Luke just batted away that criticism he could whilst agreeing at the end that he needed to do better himself, but never incorporated any of it. Such Ignorance would have likely infuriated Just Stop as he left a lengthy comment only to adapt that into a video further on to get his point across whilst also showing Luke the error of his ways in which could have gotten someone cancelled as he didn't have a full picture. Once a point was proven, Luke would try to respond again but it was widely frowned upon by others in the community and thus his downfall began there. After such a beatdown, Just Stop took sights on Creepshow Art and helped cripple her alongside the dock makers for others to help her take down too. As stated by Just Stop, he pretty much quit commentary after the drama died down and went to focus more so on reviewing work, with a change in design hitting his character too. So far, they seem to come out in either long forms of up to an hour, or more so focus on a single character, more show, and have it last no longer than 20 minutes or so. His Twitter is rather infrequent also in post, whether it be making a reference, or pointing something out in the media.
One of the smaller content creators to come into this drama would be Spy V, who played a role in making a long written document with a friend named Scritus. It is comprised of evidence and text to help bring down multiple people feuding against Hopeless Peaches at the time, with the main focus on Prison Mate Luke and side targets being both Creepshow Arts and Camilla Cuevas, who dredged up topics that were either long since resolved or were twisted into being issues. With Luke already being down and Camilla not being one to do videos regarding such issues, besides her document that was proven to be wrong in ways. It left only Creepshow to do something and sure enough a rebuttal was made, though it turned out to be nothing more than her speculating, twisting things out of context like usual, or continuing to lie, such as how she brought up Manga Common when addressing who made the document before alluding to the fact he was a sexist by how he never swore around her. The video itself was laughably bad, but needed further demonking to hopefully get Creepshow to stop lying make sure nobody fell for it either. This is where Spy V came in, again, to clear up what they had found, dispel rumours and clarify things to those looking in briefly. Just when the dust seemed to be settling, Kai came from the blue to lash at Spy V, using an edited tweet to make her come off as a racist, which was pure libel. This resulted in a collaboration with Just a Robot, which would which was present on both channels, showing different ways Kai had done wrong, and that was that. Unfortunately, there isn't much to be said in regard to Spy V's current standing, as they aren't active on YouTube at all, but post often on Twitter now with her potentially coming back to do more videos. The main issue was schoolwork and mental health issues coming in from everywhere at the time that made things more difficult to do, so they put it on hold until the right time came up. Now, obviously, to say these were the only contenders in this whole drama saga would be ridiculous, as there wouldn't be enough time for me to go over everybody, their part in the situation, but then how they were doing now as well. However, others were contenders, but didn't quite add to be considered, would be people such as Spockter and his wrap up the entire Toby drama, showing how a lot of people fucked up to get to this conclusion. There were lots of people who tried to get their thoughts in, only to be swept up into the crowd and lost to the opinion they originally supported. Long or short, positive or negative, it all came down to the ignorance and research done by the person in question while they considered how much they could be trusted. As a whole, I hope this is a wake-up call for people to take in the fact that they shouldn't always rely on one person for details and that they should branch out to do their own research or ask their own questions in order to get the answers necessary to break open a case. You may have to wait for the appropriate information to come out, but always keep an open mind before you can start ruling things out of your notes. To tie everything up in a nice pink bow, it is clear to say that whilst emotions ran high, things were said to the detriment of others, leading into something so severe and mind-numbing that it was pathetic to even point out. Everyone who got punished was not done in a justified manner, but certainly done for the greater good of the respected community, now with them being unable to drag others down or slander another. On the other hand, such a shockwave through the landscape no doubt changed people's content to be more laid back in the long run to avoid such a pain or return to the roots that they know is best for them. Unfortunately, it seems that the catalysts were the ones to suffer the most as they were shunned from their platform or struggled to hang on to what was left over once the damage began to set in. Did they deserve the full force of such hate? Most certainly not, but to be criticised, I do agree they could have been checked without being cut across the body, but we have now to reflect on what we have done. Not everyone is innocent, but that doesn't mean we have to be purged for a handful of mistakes. Though, two handfuls is far more than someone should have. If you know what to do, then be genuine with the people you want to see do better, instead of being overtly rude to get a simple point across. With that, I'm done with this video. Please like and subscribe so we can reach 100 subscribers. I don't know if there's anything left to cover, because... I've wrapped up everything I wanted to say. Maybe in some point I'll look at these Discord that's dedicated to just write fan fiction of Kai in jail, because I mean otherwise there's nothing much to cover now. I've looked into the past, 
looked into the future of what seems to be happening now and ultimately until the verdict comes in February nothing dynamic is going to happen. I have been VSM and I will see you next time. Hopefully.